Hello and welcome to the Lydia McGrew channel. I want to mention here right at the beginning that my Anchor uh, podcast with the help of Eric Manning of Testify has uh, now caught up to approximately the present. And so hopefully this video will go on there, uh, just the audio portion thereof if you want to listen to the audio. So head on over there if you want to see my past content um, in and, or listen to it in just audio form if you prefer that. Today I'm going to be continuing my series on how Jesus sounds in the Gospel of John and claims that Jesus sounds so weird uh, in the Gospel of John and so different that there's a question mark over the robust historicity of Jesus' reported words in John. And by robust historicity, again, I don't mean necessarily verbatim recording. I think John had a very good memory, and there are no doubt short phrases and portions that are verbatim, but um, it, that it would be recognizable, that if you were there, you could say, oh, you know, that's the bread of life discourse and that kind of thing. The argument I'm going to be discussing today is uh, what I call the myth of the seven I am discourses. Now, as we were talking about before, I'm hitting certain things that I call false facts. Uh, and I'm using the uh, Darwinian phrase that a false fact is injurious, that it, it, it messes us up. Notice that you can have a false fact that's uh, featuring in an argument even where the, the conclusion doesn't follow. So that even if that fact, that statement were true, the, the conclusion wouldn't follow from it. You can have both. You can have false premises and also faulty reasoning from those premises. And I think that's what we have in the case of the alleged seven I am discourses. So I want to say right now, if you see a commentator or a scholar or a person writing a blog post saying that there are seven I am discourses in John, that doesn't in itself mean or probabilify that it's not, these are not robustly historical and even the person saying it may believe that they are robustly historical. So you have to get more context uh, to see how the person is using that claim. But it is in fact a false claim. So we need to we need to hit that. We need to realize that too, because when you pile enough different false claims together, it can give the, the impression of some kind of cumulative case against uh, historicity. So what do I mean by an I am discourse when I'm denying that there are seven of them? Well, I mean something that was drawn to my attention back in 2018. Uh, in, <clears throat> in 2018, Justin Brierley of Unbelievable arranged a uh, dialogue slash debate between me and Dr. Craig Evans on the historicity of John's Gospel. In 2017, some remarks had begun to come to light that Dr. Evans had made back in 2012 uh, about John's Gospel. And I will be putting in the show notes a, a link to a blog post I did and then also to the relevant videos uh, at last I checked, these videos were available in full, long videos, not taken out of context, and Dr. Evans's remarks cast very broad doubt upon the robust historicity of the Gospel of John, not just certain, uh, not just certain special passages or something like that. Now, in 2018, he gave the very strong impression that he was merely calling into question whether the I am discourses were recorded verbatim. Well, that's an incorrect uh, description of what he had been doing in two ways. First, it wasn't just whether they were verbatim that he was calling into question. It was, uh, he was claiming that in these places, Jesus looks like Lady Wisdom. He looks like an allegorical character and that this is a, a clue that they aren't historical, a lot more ju than just if they were verbatim. And uh, second, that he, his remarks in 2012 ranged much more widely than just these alleged discourses. Um, so that was an incorrect impression. Next time I'm going to talk, Lord willing, about this claim that in these 
I am discourses, Jesus sounds so unusual, so literary for verses at a time that he uh, sounds in a very distinct way, like Lady Wisdom in the Old Testament. Uh, and the way I'm going to talk about that is as if someone suddenly started talking in Shakespearean English in a in a biography and nobody took any notice of it. Um, and, and that that would be a clue that that didn't happen. Um, if Especially if he's talking about like a specific fictional character. But I decided not to include that in this particular video because it was getting too long. So today I'm just going to talk about the myth of the I seven I am discourses. So what, uh, what Dr. Evans claimed, and you will see this elsewhere, even in people who think they're very robustly historical, is that there are seven or about seven places where Jesus initiates with a I am saying with a predicate. So that would be like, I am the true vine. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. And then he goes on and on for many verses. And the idea is that it's thematic, okay? That it's, why is it an I am discourse? Well, because he's thematically expounding the metaphor. I would say that at the most generous, there are three. Uh, and one in particular that meets this description very well, which is the bread of life discourse uh, in John 6, because there Jesus even repeats, I am the bread of life. You know, I am the true bread that came down from heaven, etc., over and over again uh, in the discourse. Uh, not that that is in any way an indication that it's not robustly historical. In fact, John locates it very definitely in the synagogue at Capernaum and some of the uh, remarks recorded from the audience really uh, show Jesus as a strongly historical character because they're bringing up the fact that they know who his parents are and so forth. Um, but about three is not about seven. It's not even close. Okay. Sometimes you'll also see the claim, which Dr. Evans did not make, that these seven I am discourses are each associated with a miracle. Now, Jesus could have chosen to do that. He could have chosen to illustrate a miracle with an I am saying and have an I am discourse as well, all of that coming together. And John could have just recorded that. But in fact, we find I am sayings associated with miracles with no I am discourse. I am discourses uh, with no miracle. Okay. Um, and in some places, Jesus will say, and I am saying, with neither a, a discourse on that topic nor a miracle. So the seven, uh, or approximately seven, I am sayings with predicates in John. Sayings, okay, in no particular order. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. He says that twice in two different, two different settings. I am the good shepherd. I am the door of the sheepfold. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the true vine and I am the way, the truth and the life. I was just realizing if you count the way separately from the truth uh, or even separately from the life, you get eight or nine. But he, he puts those together. I am the way, the truth and the life in John 14. Okay, so again, what I'm pointing out is that this notion of this very regulated, very distinctive thing, and that there are seven of them, or even about seven of them, as an I am discourse, is a false premise. A historicity would not even be probabilified, even if the premise were true, but a false fact is an injurious thing. So I want to show that this premise is false. Okay, so let's go through these. I am the bread of life. There is a discourse on that, probably the most classic thing that conforms to the uh, I am discourse definition in John 6. He, he repeats the saying, he comes back to it, and it even is shortly after the feeding of the 5,000 and arguably, because the people have been asking him to do it again, provide uh, bread for them. Again, you could think of it as being associated with that miracle. All right. I am the light of the world. Now, ironically, this was the one that, that Dr. Evans chose to 
illustrate. He said, he'll say a, a, an I am saying, I am the light of the world, you know, for example, and then it'll go on and on for many verses, okay? Um, and that one is one of the ones that's associated with neither a miracle nor a uh, topical discourse. He says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life in John 8. And then he's immediately challenged by people in his audience, the leaders in his audience who say, you're testifying to yourself. The Pharisees challenge him. Your, your testimony can't be true. They kind of go meta, you know. And then, then there is this uh, dialogue, increasingly tense dialogue, culminating in before Abraham was I am, which we discussed before, but not on the topic of, of that metaphor of being the light of the world. It's not an I am discourse in that topical sense, okay? Um, it's, it's more about, you know, who testifies to him and, uh, you know, does he have a right and, you know, etc. Okay. Um, so we've had, I am the bread, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. This one, there's about two verses, no discourse, and it's, something that he says, you can look it up in John 11, um, to Martha, and then proceeds with the, the narrative proceeds and he raises Lazarus from the dead. So obviously he's giving her assurance. It's associated with the miracle of raising a man from the dead, but no discourse on the topic, just like a couple verses, very brief. Okay. Um, oh, and to go back on I am the light of the world, he says it a second time uh, right before healing the blind man. So there, there's a miracle associated, I'm the light of the world, and then he makes the paste and puts it on the man's eyes. Um, but no, no discourse there either. It's just the narrative of, he says, while I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world and heals the man. Okay. Um, I am the good shepherd and I am the door of the sheepfold are bound together in one place that I think could fairly be considered a discourse in John 10, you know, goes to, if I recall correctly, about verse 18. Um, and he kind of weaves them in and out. Some people have said this is because the shepherd would actually lie down across in front of the the, the door of the sheepfold. I have not researched that. I don't know if that's true, but he goes back and forth, you know, uh, between being the door of the sheep and being the good shepherd. And he does expound that metaphor. Then it gives some uh, comments that the, that the audience is making. It gives a, a location, which may be like a new, uh, like a shift of location at a time and uh, Jesus is uh, then saying again, my sheep hear my voice. A little bit later in the chapter, he doesn't use the I am saying again, but that, that metaphor when he's walking in Solomon's porch. So again, this location, location, location in John. The bread of life discourse, John is very explicit. He's in the synagogue at Capernaum. So again, not appearing to be presenting this as non-historical at all. But the fact that those two sayings are bound together, uh, again, further shortens the number of I am discourses that there even could be. Okay. I am the true vine. I, I am willing to uh, generously, by a generous estimate, say that Jesus does go on to expound that metaphor as part of the farewell remarks that he's making to the disciples for something on the order of 15 verses, where he keeps mentioning fruit, that you need to abide in him to bear fruit, and it is the will of the Father that you should bear fruit. That's in John 15. Okay, so now we've got our approximately three, at most, I am discourses. Bread of life, um, the the good shepherd melded with the door of the sheep and the true vine. Um, so then we have, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is 
something Jesus is that, you know, according to John said to his disciples there on the night in which he was betrayed. But it's interspersed with dialogue and it goes immediately to talking about, you know, the access to the Father, very Johannine theme, of course, um, about Jesus being uh, the one who reveals the Father. But he doesn't repeat, I am the way. He doesn't expound the metaphor at all. It comes up pretty naturally. Uh, he's saying, uh, I'm going to go away, prepare a place for you, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. And then Thomas says, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way. And then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Then they go on talking about, you know, show us the Father, Philip says, and he who has seen me has seen the Father. Um, talking about the Father, Jesus' relationship with the Father. It's not a discourse on that topic. Okay, so let's see if I'm up to, if I'm up to the approximately seven I am sayings yet. I've addressed I am the bread of life, I am the true vine, I am the light of the world, both times, I am the good shepherd, I am the door of the sheep, I am the way, the truth, and the life, yes, and I am the resurrection and the life. So that's, that's the approximately seven I am sayings with predicates that we have. The predicate is the word after the am. So this is, these are distinguished from before Abraham was I am because there's no predicate there. And as you can see, and watch back through, okay, um, there are only approximately three of those. And look it up yourself. Get, get John's gospel and look it up yourself. Um, the, there are not even approximately seven places where John uh, reports that Jesus gave an I am discourse following on from the I am saying, much less seven places where that's combined with a miracle as well. Once again, hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Jesus doesn't have approximately seven I am sayings with predicates in John's gospel. He does. I don't, I don't really think the number seven is symbolic there, um, especially since you can get more if you count them a little differently. Uh, but I just don't think there's anything symbolic, but I'm not denying there are approximately seven. I am not saying that Jesus never combines, uh, and I am saying with a predicate with a miracle. I am not saying that Jesus never combines, and I am saying with a predicate with a discourse. Okay. But what I am saying is that this neat little picture uh, that's meant to look sort of historically suspicious when some people use use it, of seven discourses based on I am sayings uh, is, is, is false. It's just a false premise. Now, next time, we'll be talking about the further thing that uh, Dr. Evans piles onto this picture that is supposed to make these look like they, they sort of pop out at you, which is this uh, Jesus speaks for many, many verses as Lady Wisdom and uh, this suspiciously unrealistic way that he's talking, making him look like an allegorical character. I will be addressing that next time. I'll probably call that something like, you know, the myth of the super literary Jesus or something like that. Uh, and I hope you'll come back next time to listen to that. But today I've refuted one false premise that makes things look more, at least somewhat unusual or patterned in the Gospel of John than they really are. When you dig into this, it, it kind of falls apart. That picture falls apart of 7 I Am Discourses. So please like, please subscribe. You will not get this content anywhere else unless if you get it in book form, you buy The Eye of the Beholder, which I, I discuss there. And I've discussed it as well in some blog posts in the past. But you're, you're not going to get this exact content explained in this much detail, uh, as far as I know, from anybody else. So please do subscribe and come back next time.